Terrible. We were the serious journalists of entertainment news. And there we are, dancing in the street. Yeah. You know, I've blocked this from my memory. I don't remember any of this. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm John Tesh. And I'm Mary Hart, and I get to say welcome, John Tesh, to the show. John and I anchored at the ET desk together for 10 years. One favorite memory? His audition from back in 1986. TV viewers will have the chance to vote for their favorite song next week. How did that feel? I felt pretty good. I mean, with your with your coaching, it felt even better. Oh well. I was in a flop sweat. I was I was really nervous. I really wanted the job. You were very sweet, and it was very different for me. So I was yeah. I sweated through a couple of shirts. Shout out to John Tesh. <laughs> Hi, I'm John Tesh. No. Oh. 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 Yeah, it's no wonder so many stars still remember John. You know, we built such a beautiful bond, which is why we both got extremely emotional talking about his new book, Relentless. John, starting... It brought tears to my eyes. The first chapter of your book, I had not known until just before I read the book that you had gone through this very, very serious battle with cancer. Um, so, it truly was life-threatening, and if we can talk about that diagnosis, did you keep that quiet from everybody? I did, and I think, I think the, the reason for that was that I was just afraid of, I was afraid of what would happen to my business, our family business, if, if people were all of a sudden writing me off, because the diagnosis was dire. Uh, my, my doctor, uh, if he hadn't, found this cancer because it, it didn't make blood markers, but if he hadn't found this cancer the way he did with a digital ex exam, um, I wouldn't, I just, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And, and so I, I think there's something wrong, John, turned into uh, a, a trip to UCLA and then, and then to Johns Hopkins. Um, but before that, the tests indicated that I probably had, it was a very rare form of prostate cancer. And I know people who are watching this have had, uh, thousands of them have had a diagnosis like this. But it, um, yeah, I got by 18 months to, to, you know, to two years to live. They said they could probably guarantee me that. It was like pulling the tablecloth out from your, you know, from your, your setting. And so um, immediately, you know, I was, I was paralyzed. My family was paralyzed, except Connie just immediately, you know, she sprang into action. John's wife of nearly 28 years, actress Connie Selica, along with their children, 38-year-old son Gib and 25-year-old daughter Prima, provided love and support through the difficult chemo and surgery. But John's pain and suffering almost became too much to bear. I know there was a point after the, I think it was the first surgery, yeah. where you were in such agony. You just, you and Connie were holding hands at your hospital bed and you said, please kill me, just kill me. I had, I had complications and they, um... The, uh, the nurse came at me with, a, with, a, with an NG tube, a nasogastric tube. And, and they stick this tube in your nose because they have to pump out your stomach. And there was blood pouring from my nose and, and I was in so much agony, so much pain. And, and, and I, we, we, looked at, we looked at her, looked at each other and, and that, was, that was exactly what I said because it just, I, I, just, I just had enough. If they hadn't been fighting for me, I, I would have taken the kettlebells in my backyard and strapped into my ankles and jumped in the pool, I, I thought about it. And then you're, you're, you're crying and you're feeling sorry for yourself and then you go and you get chemo and next to you is a kid who has six more lines in their arms than you do, who's eight years old, you know, and then you start feeling guilty. So suffering is real and, and I have such respect for it and for people who get on the other side of it. What did surprise me was that you really hit that low point and you rode away on your bike and you essentially yeah, left yeah, Connie. Yeah. Yeah. at home yeah. and it almost ended. I started drinking too much scotch whiskey. I was not, uh, I was not available for as much for Prima and, and Gib. I felt sorry for myself and I rode off on a bicycle. It only took about 20 miles and I was calling Connie and asking how she was. I mean, and you know, she, she ultimately forgave me. I used cancer as an excuse not to fight and that was wrong. Even after treatment, the cancer returned. It was then that John and Connie turned to their faith and divine healing scriptures. So instead of speaking to God about cancer, we started speaking to cancer about God. And we started, we started manifesting that I would be healed. I was healed not only of cancer, uh, and the testing later proved that, but also healed of our, I had terrible arthritis in my ankle from, from all of the times I'd broken my ankle. John says he's beaten cancer and hopes his journey can inspire others. 
We have purpose, we have grit, we have persistence. And then when you have that all, when you mix in faith-filled words, you can become relentless doing anything. We love John and we are so yes. happy that he is healthy today. Much more from Mary and John's conversation tomorrow, how John almost got fired from ET. Can't wait for that.